Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Our God is such a glorious God to blow his four winds on us. If you haven't listened to my sermon from a couple weeks ago, you may not have an understanding of what I'm talking about, but that's okay. We're going to have more discovery about it today, and I'll give a recap. So, if you're new to this podcast, hello. I'm Pastor Karina, and I'm here to guide you into God's Word and help you apply it to your life. The Trumpets of Tears of Podcast is a biblical lifestyle targeting tool for shifting your mindset from the world's way back to God's way. Hello, beloved. Our study on wind has really been enlightening, hasn't it? I'm so much more aware of the wind in a brand new way. Immediately upon feeling any kind of wind, I find myself turning to the Lord and asking him, which wind is that? And what do you want to say about it? To make sure that we're all on the same page, I want to briefly summarize the four winds for you that I did go over in church. And I do encourage you to listen to that sermon that I gave on the four winds so you have more understanding and context for them. The link to that sermon can be found in the description of this episode. But in order for us to get started today, I do want to summarize these four winds that we find in the Bible, beginning with the north wind. The north wind brings righteous conviction and God's correction. The east wind brings the power of God and points to his sovereignty. The west wind brings God's renewal and restoration. And the south wind brings God's favor and his blessings. Now, in order to get to the blessings, the end, we have to start with a correction at the beginning. There is no fast track to the things of God. Many times we want the favor and the blessings, but we don't want to start at the beginning with the conviction and the correction. But we have to put in the work first, and then we'll receive second. When we aren't receiving the blessings, we need to be mature enough to ask for the correction. And then as we align with God, then his blessings start to flow. We need to have biblical understanding and wisdom in doing things God's way by his design rather than what we want to see or what makes sense to us. In order to receive from God, we have to be in right standing with him. And in order to be in right standing with him, we have to be corrected from our own ways. Many times we can be stubborn and we can refuse to give up our old ways. But as Paul said, when we come to follow Jesus, we are called a new creation. And in our new creation, there's no room for the old ways. If we keep the old ways, then we have to stay the old creation, which we're supposed to leave behind. So when that north wind of God blows over us and brings the correction, It blows away our old self. When we are careful in our spiritual walk, we become more mindful about living by God's design and following his ways. That means that each and every day, we should be growing in our faith and resembling the character of Jesus more and more each day. A really good activation exercise and a habit to get into is waking up in the morning and asking the Lord to blow his north wind over you so that you begin your day in an accurate place and in right standing with God. Then you can begin your day by becoming a brand new creation. How refreshing! (laughs) For those of you that have been listening for some time to this podcast, You've probably heard me talk about being a new creation and how to walk it out from one of our previous studies. But there are some things that are so important that they just need repeating. And it is by repetition that we get into new habits and the things of God then become a daily part of us. 
then become a natural reaction and a response. So let's go to scripture and see how we can walk out the things of God. This is 2 Corinthians 5, verse 5. Now he who has made us and prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us the Holy Spirit as a pledge, a guarantee, a down payment on the fulfillment of his promise. The Father created us in his image, in his spiritual likeness, and he created us with a purpose that is a part of his master plan. And in order to carry out that plan, we need the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, too many Christians are sleepwalking, keeping the Holy Spirit dormant in their lives. When in reality, just as the scripture says, the Holy Spirit is our down payment from the Father on the fulfillment of his promise. What a gift from God. We need to steward this gift well. You have been prepared by the Lord for his purpose. He has already equipped you, but if you don't know that you've already been equipped or how to use the equipment, then its significance will be lost on you. For example, let's say that you want to start a podcast and you've been gifted some very high-tech equipment and all the lighting that you need to create a professional podcast. But if you don't know where the plugs go, if you don't know how one piece of equipment works with another piece, and then you don't have the software installed to make it all work collaboratively together after installation, then the gift of the equipment is lost on you. To you, it's just a pile of chaos that's taking up valuable desk space. Ugh. <laughs> Now you need it, but because you don't know how to use it and the thought of learning about it overwhelms you and you aren't really interested in learning, then the value of that equipment sits untouched and then starts to depreciate. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit doesn't ever depreciate, but you get the meaning of what I'm saying. You have to just jump in and start to partner with the Holy Spirit the Ruach, the wind, that breath of God. And like the wind, the Holy Spirit is the one who does all the work. You just have to go in the direction of his wind. As you think about wind upon the earth, it is a struggle to try to go against a strong wind. But it's super easy to go in the direction of the wind and be willingly moved by it. So when we aren't partnering with the Holy Spirit, by default, we are going against him, and that will get us into trouble every single time. We need to be a good steward of the precious gift that the Father has given to us. He has given us the Holy Spirit in order to equip us for our part in his plan. So let's go back to scripture and get more about this because often the big question is, well, how do I start? So let's go to James 1 verses 5 and 6. If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is to ask our benevolent God who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame, and it will be given to him. But he must ask for wisdom in faith without doubting God's willingness to help. For the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed by the wind. The first step in partnering with God's Holy Spirit is to ask him through prayer for his wisdom and do not doubt his willingness to help. Now, right there, there are two really big action steps. Ask and don't doubt. <laughs> In general, this world has taught us to be self-sufficient and not to ask for help. Through this world, the world has conditioned us to be away and separated from God, which is why it can seem like a struggle to get back 
close to God again because it hasn't always been our go-to. But God always wants us to come to him. He wants to be a part of our lives. He wants to use us as part of his plan. So we must ask him for help. We need to ask him for his wisdom and not rely on our own understanding. As we seek his wisdom, we need to know without a doubt that God is willing to help. And that's the beauty about being in relationship with someone that you know is reliable. You never doubt that they will always be there. And that is what our relationship with God needs to look like. Knowing that he will always be there for us. As we become intentional about partnering with the Holy Spirit and we have the experience of seeing him show up every time, we then become more fearless and have no doubts that he is always with us and willing to help us. Each wind of God is to serve us and to bring us back into right standing with him so we can have relationship with him. If we're doing something that we shouldn't be doing or acting in a way that we shouldn't be acting, it keeps us away from God. And if we're staying away from God, then we really can't have a relationship with him. God won't have a dysfunctional relationship because it's not in his character to do so. God requires healthy relationship. We need to get spiritually healthy so then we can enter into healthy relationship. Now, that doesn't mean that we need to be perfect. It means that we need to be healthy and know how to approach God in a respectful way at all times. I want to give you an example of this so you can understand the difference of what I'm speaking about. So let's say you're in a dating relationship and a disagreement arises over something that is relatively small. Now, in a dysfunctional relationship, neither party is listening to the other because you both think that you're right. And the disagreement then spirals out of control. Objects might even get thrown around the room. One person leaves in a huff. And you don't talk for about a week. And then when you do talk, there is still a lot of anger and neither one of you are ready to make peace because of your attitude about being right. Dysfunctional. Now contrast that with a healthy relationship. When there's a disagreement, you can talk about it. Each party is listening to the other and the disagreement gets settled and then you go out to get dinner together and you move forward. Same disagreement, different outcomes. When we look at each of these relationship scenarios, it's plain to see that one has honor and respect for the other, while the other has pride and resentment. You can disagree while having honor and respect. And that is how God wants us to approach him. He knows that because we actually lack understanding, we are going to be frustrated and disagree. And that's okay with him as long as we honor and respect his authority. And he'll teach us about what's right. There's also a lot of grace for that. Sometimes that grace needs to start by you having it for yourself. And the Holy Spirit, who is the helper, can assist you with having grace even for yourself. That is a small part of God's north wind of correction. Correction doesn't have to be harsh. It's meant to purify. Amen? I encourage you to spend time in the presence of the Lord. Ask Him to blow His winds over you. Ask for his wisdom and be more intentional about partnering with the Holy Spirit. And if you're ready for the next step in your life, then come join us. It will awaken your purpose and you will be transformed. God bless you.